a national championship appearance just a couple of years ago to underwhelming. I went straight to the source TCU to learn how the community would go about rebuilding this team. There's only one problem. My audio did not capture and I didn't catch it to the next day. I'm cooked. We had a lot of fun as you can see here. We interviewed Buddy here and he was Houdini. The only guy that I talked to that night that predicted Houston winning and in the same breath said that TCU quarterback Hoover was cheeks. It was jokes then but little did I know how right he was. The other TCU fans that I interviewed throughout the night had a consistent story. Houston should have been a no brainer. Defense needs improvement to go the distance. TCU is back in the saddle and ready to ride but yeah. Evidently, they're not. And lastly, Hoover has just got to play better. That means my challenges are as follows. Fix Hoover or drop him. And you know what? I'm going to drop him and pass me the Henny. Hoss Henny, Haney, Heine. Regardless, the man has no skill cap on his power, elusiveness, health, and quickness, which is crazy because he already has 91 speed and only one cap on accuracy and IQ. He'll be a star for the years to come here at TCU. He might even bring him a national championship. Challenge number two is to recruit only defense. Guys like Tim Hope can give Horn Frog fans a lot of hope that the team will be all right. Heck, guys like Ramon Gay are gonna get sloppy toppy with it out of Fort Worth, Texas, 95 speed. He's ready to run wild. If we can't land our local boy third best in the nation, I'm gonna be disappointed. Challenge number three is to get back in the saddle, get to a bowl game, win a bowl game, either this season or next. And lastly, of course, we need to win that national championship within five. Not in the preseason poll for the top 25. Predicts are already sleeping on the frogs, predicting them to finish 10th in the Big 12, which honestly, that might be pretty realistic in real life. I forgot to mention one of the most fun challenges, of course, is to jump in against Houston, the game that I went to in person, watched them get whooped, but I can maybe rewrite the script. I need to win this game, and since Hoover threw two interceptions, I need to throw less than two with Henny. And that is exactly where we start our story three and two on the season. The results looked a little different, but the record of three and two is exactly identical to what they did in real life before meeting up with the exactly identical one in four Houston Cougars. Before we jump into the game, side note on the unis, man, I'm bummed they don't have the spikes around the collar anymore. I thought they were one of the drippiest, coolest uniform combinations in the league, and I can't even play as it in college football 25, so I'm bummed out. I guess that's beside the point for the sake of the rebuild tangent over. It's time to go to Frogland and get a big dub. Let's rewrite the disgrace of a game that just happened this past weekend where the Cougars beat us. First couple drives were unsuccessful successful for both squads until Hodges right now is going to flip this game on its head. Picked off. Give me that. Let's go, man. The linebacker's been around for a while. I know he's been a presence here. One of the better players on the team. For a team that needs defensive help, Hodges is a bright spot. And oh my goodness, Haney could be the next bright spot. Man was getting walloped while throwing that ball and he'll get one out again to Dabney. Looks like we got a young gun magician here at the helm. Gonna step up and run. Little play action here. Scramble out to our left. Maybe not. Wow. Oh, what? I thought he cut it for a touchdown. I thought we made it work. Instead, that goes into Houston's lap. Can't throw more ints this game if we want to successfully complete that challenge. So to be safe with the turnover of our own first and goal, Cam Cook, get in there, baby. Come on, Cam Bone. Give it to you again. Cam Bone, where you at, my guy? McAllister, RPO. All right, who said Houston's allowed to have a stingy defense? We're just going to go ahead and take a quick dump here to our guy William. You saw the disheartening result there on offense. Couldn't get it in. Back on defense. Second user lurk of the day. Don't mess with me. T.O. turned into points. Donovan Smith doesn't know how to act right now. Low-key passes the vibe check when you make a run first team pass. You're going to throw some mistakes. Wet and rainy here in Fort Worth. They're gonna tie it up 7-7, so we have to make a move. Haney has had somewhat of a sloppy day. Gonna need to rely on guys like Cook here to get this thing moving. There's how you move the chains. I can't believe Cam got stuffed like a stuffed turkey on that last drive. The only ones cooking in the kitchen were the Cougars. Regardless, Cam back to Cook, maybe on the final drive of the game where it matters most. In a rain game here, getting a heavy dose of carries, looking to help out the freshman quarterback. Just out of the two minute warning, this is crunch time. 
and we got crunched. Back to Cam we go, breaking one tackler. And now we're forced to pass here on third and 14. Beck looks like he might have a step. What a connection. Beck in real life actually has been turning up for the Frogs, but in the video game, he's like the third highest receiver. Got Houston taking their final timeouts. And on this third and seven, gonna dump it to Richardson. Nowhere. Gonna settle for our three points here and trust the defense to finish out this game. A lot of recruits visiting this game, wanting to see the frogs prevail. Smith is moving the needle for sure, and we got to get a stop. Crucial third down. Let's just keep them out of field goal range. Looks like they called up four verticals. Not going to get it. Here we go. Final play of the game. He's just going to take a quick out to number 13. Nothing doing. So we defended the home turf, got the job done 10 to 7. We'll take it out of Haney. A little rough around the edges. But yeah, honestly, give it up to the defense and Johnny Hodges. Now, as for our other challenge going all defense in year one. Well, it just got a whole lot better with Jason Mangan out of Longview, Texas. He joins left outside linebacker Jamar Brown out of Louisiana. This guy will be a stud. Four-star gem athlete Jadarius Murphy. He's got an offense and defensive skill set. Excited to plug a man out of Dallas, Texas. In desperate need of cornerbacks, you just saw Mangan, but we still have a chance and look like we're on the verge of closing in Ramon Gay. Gordon Maddox gave us the finger and went to Georgia. On the topic of secondary, here's a look at the free safeties. We're pretty much in the running for one, but now that we got points for others maybe it's a good idea we scout out these other four stars dixon gem arkansas's got a lead but we're the only one to give him a scholarship so let's go pound him. dean choice made the wrong choice only strong safety left on the board that we still have a chance at it's carlos cheeseman got ourselves a real user here in lamar 91 speed gonna be running like lamar jackson but coming in with six foot two 227 pound strength and if we can keep working it slowly but surely denton tech Texas David DeMarco, 87 speed, 88 tackle, good intangibles. Here's a five-star linebacker. We'll compliment nicely. Y'all know Jamar, but you don't know Jackson O'Malley, and we're about to get him. Kind of disappointed here in the defensive tackle room. DE -E as well. We were getting close on Jesus. He chose Oregon. Like I said, though, I got time. Let's scout out some other guys like Daryl Drumfor. So not bad in our initial progress to the tune of four and two. Josh Hoover came in for a game, did all right. Two touchdowns, no ints. 200 yards. Come on, Haas Henny. Need more from you in the second half. When JP Richardson touches the ball as a rusher, 19.2 yards per carry. Feed that man the rock. Surprised we've won the amount of games we have with limited pressure on defense. But it won't be in question no more with Jackson O'Malley arriving on campus. Give it up for Ramon Gay. Come on now. Towards the end of the season, we got most of our guys, but we got to a point. You see it here. Ben Portillo locked us out because our championship contender grade went down the tubes. That can only mean one thing that we fell off in the second half, which we did. Three straight losses, big one to Oklahoma State, and then barely getting squeaked out by Arizona and Cincinnati. Impressive win earlier in the season, beating seventh ranked Utah. Haney still threw three picks, but it looks like our run game had more splash plays and our defense stepped up. Just wish we could have replicated that for the remainder. Like I said earlier, we need better from our quarterback. Around the Big 12, Oklahoma State, Utah, West Virginia, top three offenses. Defense surprising here. Cincinnati, Houston atop the list. We're in the bottom six. And oh yeah, I forgot to mention bottom three offense conversions not good red zone efficiency not good penalties not good turnovers not good second worst behind cincinnati gotta get more takeaways and stop giving it back that's what this class is for and before we get to any of the signing days it's coming in at 13. i'm just excited to open up the floodgates to any and all prospects next season now that we've addressed a team need defense xk stater go cats will howard wins the heisman and hey we got a little bowl game action six and six independence bowl versus michigan state not quite back in the saddle like i meant in the beginning of the video but we can still qualify that challenge by winning this game and that's exactly what we're gonna look to do sending out the seniors with a final hoorah the independence bowl the bowl game of dreams who needs the playoff bracket when you got this one right here i'm ready to bring it to michigan state my question to them is are they ready to take it in the chin maybe all right all right i just had to see if they were napping i'll get back to my reads going underneath play action once more McAllister should get open over the middle unless i'm dog water and throw an interception there it goes i got a comment the other day saying people find this content extremely entertaining especially when i throw into triple coverage now nah, but for real i like the comment that said i'm maxing out the storytelling 
arc and I'm not putting much into gameplay, huh? Gonna need to work on putting some skill points into the gameplay archetype if we're gonna have a chance at winning this game. We're down 21-0. All the jokes aside, I'm actually concerned probably more about the prestige of the program if we lose. Sitting at a comfy three and a half stars, we're probably gonna go down at least a full star if we can't get the job done. But for all the non-believers, let me introduce you to Haas Henny on the run to Williams. Hold on now, who let Sponge cook? McAllister is one of them receivers that are actually really underrated. He did transfer over from Boise State, so it's not like I'm biased or nothing, right? But nah, he's really good, and he is the favorite red highlighted route here on this one. Why not throw it that way? With 12 seconds left, we still got all our timeouts, so we gotta keep that in mind as we dump it to Cam for minus eight. That was sick. Feeling awfully sickly after that poor decision. McAllister, no. Fourth and 18, we need something to start the comeback. Mine as well settle and get our team on the board. This is what I'm talking about. A little third quarter action here. Dabney on the dump off, running the man over. And now an RPO to McAllister. We're playing ball unless he drops it. Wide open drops like that. I'm not throwing to you again. Just got done glazing you in the second quarter and you do me like that. Wait, that was fourth down. And I didn't even realize what down it was. We're going to get out of here sooner than later. Don't you worry, TCU fans. Just for now, cover your eyes. I have work to do. If only we could connect on a deep streak like that earlier. I don't think we have time, but you never know, never say die. Unless you actually don't have another chance and you blow it on defense. 21-10, Michigan State wins the bowl game. Let's pretend like this game didn't happen, TCU, and let's move on to year two. Maybe Cam Ward is worth the hype. After all, he led his team through the playoffs into the final game against Will Howard and the Buckeyes. And fast forward, one more week, you get the champs. Miami, congrats. I'm glad to see after a six and seven season, we only lose half a star and and better yet, no one's leaving us besides, of course, the usual graduates. Lamarion James, Jack Beck, Savion Williams, just to name a few. Salute to this class of seniors and, uh, well, candidly, one letdown of a season. Sliding into the transfer portal, sorting it by stars. As you can see, Uptown Stout is a top target. The Western Kentucky corner would fit nicely, just like Utah's defensive tackle. Couple more four stars, both from Louisiana Tech, the right guys for the job. And look at Burnett here. He's a transfer wanting to come home to Fort Worth. Got our sights set on the targets. It's defense, defense, and more defense. Really hoping Fort Worth native Burnett here turns out. He's got platinum quick jump, 94 excel as a defensive lineman. That's the type of stuff I like to see and gets me rather excited. All in all, I'm feeling really, really good about the group of guys we're bringing in. I think we have our championship caliber defense in this group. We got Keanu and Ryan Yates, but it looks like we lost our Fort Worth boy. Final week, buzz beater, no good. It went off the rim. This is perplexing to say the least. Only going into year two, up to an 89 overall across the board. We got some really big jumps. McAllister, 91 overall. Marcus Deal, he is the real deal. Sophomore, star defensive lineman from Garland, Texas. He is a stud. And you know who really surprised me? Josh Hoover fought back for his job, trained super hard in the offseason here, going into junior season, 88 overall. I'm gonna have to put the Henny down for a little bit. Back to Hoover, he stole the show. But it's only a matter of time until dual threat athlete, this is not breaking the rules. He plays defense too. He can, but he chose to go to the quarterback back route star with good mentals and physicals. This is the guy that will learn from Hoover. Now on defense, no doubt we hit some home runs. Jamar Brown, Lamar Uzuma, my future user, Jackson O'Malley. And we got real intentional here with our cornerbacks because we have a lot of seniors about to graduate. So Ramon Gay is obviously going to lead the team forward, but he's got a friend in Jason Mangan here, elite development. While we were at it, I transferred safety Dexter Whipple to cornerback because he, well, 75 overall at cornerback, but we also had multiple safety. It's pretty deep, and Kerry Dixon's the newest addition. Time to get a little cheesy with Carlos Cheeseman. Like I said, super, super happy about how last class went. And now all the training wheels are off. We got the full board in front of us. And now the board is set for the Frogs. We got Madden, a gem four-star linebacker. Harris, a die, a quarterback gem. Gem running back, Steve. McGinnis looking to set Guinness world records at corner. And as you can see by all the red, we're in need of stacking up our offense. Not a surprise when you spend a year stacking D. When I said Marcus Deal was a big deal, second team All-American in the preseason list here as a sophomore that is 
different, just like Eric McAllister securing first team all Big 12. This schedule is not very forgiving. The Big 12 tough as always. Welcoming North Carolina to Fort Worth is pretty rad, but as you can tell by my shirt and the helmet behind me, I'm a K-State alum through and through, so I'm ready to go to Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Bring on the cats. Road frog football on the road, taking on the K-State Wildcats in Manhattan. I was just about to say it's Hoover's time to shine, but look who got injured in the game against North Carolina. I'm taking a risk. I'm putting him back in the lineup. It's just a fractured toe. No big deal, right? Well, I'm just kidding. It looks like Henny's in there. And as much as I manipulate the depth chart, it doesn't reflect on the field, probably for good reason. It would be kind of wild to see the ability to play injured players at your own discretion. Henny pounded Cat's ball. They pounded our stones and get the turnover. Surprisingly, that doesn't look like Avery Johnson at quarterback either. So maybe Johnson got hurt. Regardless, that was a nifty play in and out. I think that's Keegan Johnson for six. Yep, I was right. Avery Johnson is hurt. So that's freshman Isaiah Ringo out of Wichita, Kansas. He looked real good on the last drive, but I need to win with the opportunity we have in front of us. Hurt quarterback, year two Henny. I don't know, man. Seems like the cards could align. I still think it's difficult to play in Manhattan, no matter who is at the helm. Usually putting in a good defense year in, year out. Baker stops short. The inexperience is catching up to the other quarterback. As you can tell, we have an opportunity to tie it up after many fruitless attempts. LeBron James. I'm glad we found James as he just sprung free, wide open, no one in the vicinity. It was kind of funny. Unlike that deflection interception that is anything but funny it still is 7-7 we have an opportunity to come into hostile territory it still is 7-7 after all fourth down we have a chance here to come into hostile territory and win let's go ahead and do just that first and goal if k-state was playing it smart they could chew pretty much all the clock using our last time out they're gonna hand off get stuffed third and goal dylan edwards with the carry once more fourth down now they chew clock on the field goal attempt but they're gonna give us 30 whole seconds when they could have took all the clock out of timeouts we just need to be mindful of where we're going with the ball not take any sacks shed and escape where possible henny with a great play got out of bounds got us into a really opportunistic situation if i can get McAllister on a mismatch he is a 91 overall receiver after all no eight seconds left seven seconds left that sack is literally a backbreaker we have this last play to chuck something up it looks like he had a step he kind of slowed down towards the end caught it football game 10 7 k-state squeaks us out no luck on offense man i thought henny would be a lot better than what i'm seeing are we in paris or at tcu paris from south lake is the first one to fall in this recruiting class not far behind him it's madden time not to be confused with john madden's football but college football 25 got some battles going in the wings roughly halfway through the season we should see some of them start to fall tcu fans did you know you had a guy in Jekyll Baker. Look at this. Week seven, Arizona State Player of the Week. 224 yards, four touchdowns. Clearly good enough for National Player of the Week honors too. The resurgent frogs led by Hoover. He dropped five tutties in there. You absolutely love to see it. And you know what Baker really wants to see? A championship. So if we're gonna keep this stud freshman receiver, we gotta start winning more games. After we dropped it to K-State, we beat SMU by a touchdown. Dropped it to Iowa State by two. Took care of Houston again thank you very much and guess who's back hoover's back tell a friend charles made up his mind to move from maryland to texas welcome to fort worth first five star of the season and we're about to snag one more ben cruel do you believe in hoover magic he turned it around got us into a pop tarts bowl meaning after all of that i still have a chance to come true on our promise win a bowl game get back on the saddle within two seasons check out the four game win streak to get us here highlighted by a big dub over West Virginia, UMass, Baylor, beat down against BYU. Before we get into the Pop-Tarts Bowl, it's clear to me that Hoover is a step in the right direction. Ground game not as prevalent for this offense, but man, oh man, I'm excited to build off Braylon James and young gun Geckle Baker. Immediate contribution from Gay, three interceptions, making Fort Worth proud. Now let's actually go show Hoover some love and see him in action, 25th ranked Froggy. No Pop-Tart Bowl mascot, now that's an issue. They better add that in the next year's edition. Back in the saddle again, and it feels so good. Hoover 
first play of the game, McAllister, 1-2 connection, first down. Looking to send the senior off with a win. Rogers hauled it in, and he looks like he'll get open again. Again, if only we could deliver it. Play action right into trouble. Forcing us to go deep. Third and 24. End zone. James. No good. Rather than take a 56-yard field goal and embarrass myself, we're going for it on this crazy down to go. Couldn't even get it off. It's cool, though, because Hoover's like that. Driving us right down the field again. Gonna spring out here. Baker's got six. There we go. Let's get to work. Already have the lead. I want to see if 40 seconds is enough to get more. I know that's exactly what Hoover wants, but Hoover could not get in the first half. I'm sure he can get it here if we just keep the chains moving. Jet touch third and in inches. We got it. And the edge. James, touchdown. Sophomore is here to stay. Louisville has flown right back into this game no pun intended because they're a bird team looking to blow it up with a blitz and we stop him third and eight maybe we can finish it off good sack louisville punts it back to us we can go win this thing really a crucial third down here i'm gonna hand it off i think cam can cook and he does just that first and goal they're out of timeouts i'm honestly just gonna be strategic not even gonna score chewing clock all the way down let's go ahead and dive on down 19 yard field goal honestly this far off the line is insane We'll snap, we'll kick. Look at Lemmerman in the clutch. And we made good on the promise. 17-14, Pop-Tarts Bowl headed to Fort Worth, Texas. Couple quick top recruiting classes. We got another good one here in the wings. Exactly what the frogs were after when they wanted to get back on the saddle again. Ohio State knocked out last year, made it right. The following year, they take it over USC. Couple frogs headed to the next level. It's McAllister, second round pick, and then Caleb Elarms or fifth round. We wish him luck at the next level, but can you believe this recruiting transfer portal? So many four stars, including DJ Lagwe, elite receiver Micah Hudson. I remember him from our IRL Texas Tech rebuild. Bro, I'm going to have to clear up space on this board just so I can ensure I can get as many of these dudes as possible. Talon from Oklahoma State, Reese Mooney, quarterback from Monroe. It goes on and on. Even this insane transfer freshman from Sam Houston. Hands down, this has got to be one of the best recruiting classes I've ever seen in the portal available to us. DJ Lagway is simply that guy. He's got the stats. He's got the intangibles. You know, we had such a great season and it doesn't surprise me. I admit our team is on the come up. Everyone wants to be a part of it. Micah Hudson though would be a huge loss for Tech. I'm just going to come out and say it with such a good class we brought in and now a top tier transfer portal. I think we have what it takes to honestly get to that national championship game in just four years. In week two, we land phase on the first one out of Lancaster and Micah Hudson followed right behind. I'm so geeked up. It's a receiver frenzy. Literally got three. I'm huge on Hudson because he's elite dev and only a sophomore. Check out some of these stats. 99 catching. It shouldn't be too late, but we just changed it to hard sell and DJ Lagway should commit. For other guys we don't know a bunch about, we're going to start making some educated guesses. And it looks like we can actually figure this one out. We know he cares about playing styles as deal breakers. So voila, that's your only option. Right here out of Capel, Texas, not too far. Could land another quarterback in Reese Mooney doing the same. This one's a tricky puzzle with no indicators. I think we got it though. It worked. DJ Lagway is a horn frog. Same with Braxton Myers, Reese Mooney, Marcus Bridget, Lance Hurd. I'm feeling really good about this. Huge portal sign. He's catapults us up to the second best class in the nation. It is gonna be a good one indeed my goodness look at all the four stars only one three star and he's a gem georgia had a good class but heck everyone else better take notice <laughs> The stage is set for year number three, and it is a good stage to be on. 91 overall across the board. Prestige went up after an eight-win season. So many transfers. I think we're going to give Lagway the starting knock. Somewhat of a homecoming for this stud who got tired of the Florida life. I honestly don't know much about Reese Mooney, but a four-star from Louisiana Monroe. Atop a loaded receiver room, adding in the Micah Hudson. As fun as it is to talk new guys that we just got from the portal, look at the recruits we brought homegrown here. 
Clintwood, Virginia. We found him and brought him home. Elite Dev. What you know about Ben Kroll? Caesar Sosa. Tony Hector Elite. And Joaquin Madden. You just knew with Madden the name, I guess EA was going to make him a star. Even though we all know Madden 25 is not really that much of a star in terms of gameplay. Rounding it out with John Shanessi, another elite corner. All in all, it's a young roster, and this has got to be one of the best starts I've had in quickest starts in a dynasty rebuild. It helps when you have a higher prestige like the Horn Frogs, but hey, really good quick work here. Preseason ranked 15th. Let's go ahead and welcome the Tar Heels back into Fort Worth and kick off year number three. Our cast of players is built to win now, and heck, if we don't win now, I'm going to be a little bit disappointed, not going to lie, but I also think we have another year. I say that because most of our offensive line, all our receivers, lagway, everyone would still be in attacked for the next season. We'd only lose Cam Cook, but we're already splitting time here with Payne, who has been doing a great job getting a burst and spelling in. Play action. Let's see if we can get our newest weapon involved. There he is, Micah Hudson. This is so, so good. Hudson, Lagway, two premier guys transferring over, and then we just got the homegrown talent going the distance here. We're going to be filthy, and we'll start off year number three with a bang touchdown none other than the leading receiver from last year it's braylon james quick slant and six let's go baby facing the tar heels in week one is honestly a tremendous test let's go for it on fourth and one dump it out to hudson there we go points are points if we can get it squeak it left no haven't even really took a second to showcase the defense but they're loaded as well got so many tools moral of the story will be in so many games this year never gonna be out of it the frogs in just a few years could have turned it around here to get back to that national championship they desire. Just need a coach like Coach Sponge. Had to shepherd us through some hard seasons, but now finally on the other side of the tunnel. And I'll go ahead and show you another touchdown. That's two for James. And hold on now, I don't wanna be that guy, but we might start running away with this thing if they just give us the opportunity. Lagway got a knack for looking for space and running just like a knack hitting the open guy. Hindsight, Payne should have racked that up. I'm not sure why he was being conservative. That does not help us, but what will help us hopefully is a bounce back there. He caught it out of bounds. I thought Hudson was Superman there for a second. Instead, we'll take three. No complaints whatsoever on my side today. Final kneel down from Lagway and we secure it. 1-0 ranked victory to start the season. It's gonna be a good year, I can feel it. It was all sunshine and rainbows until disaster hit look at this a two game losing streak to end out the season a perfect 7-0 in Fort Worth the Frogs went 10-2 and and my goodness the Big 12 so many ranked teams and top ranked teams it seemed like a cakewalk knocking off so many big opponents until the very end disaster struck Lagway had a really good season a little high on the interceptions but he more than made up for it with 120 QB carries evenly distributed the ball between three main receivers they're all good the team was a top three offense top three defense second in conversions top six in red zone efficiency just got stung again in the turnover department not creating enough opportunities that probably would have been the difference instead we're now watching kansas state in ucf as well as it looks like baylor three big 12 teams make it not us. And you know the Big 12 was rough and tough when Baylor made it to the semifinals, lost to Kansas State, and then Kansas State represents in the big game. And in convincing fashion, they win it all. Go Cats. But for the sake of this video, Frog fans not happy. It's our year this next year. I'm putting my money on it. That is until I noticed some players want to leave us. Very high persuasion chance on our top two receivers. Come on now. No friggin' way. Oh my goodness. Braylon James hits the road. I guess he wants to be a seventh round pick. I was for sure thinking he would come back to school. Hudson does, thank goodness. He'll be in line for a monster senior season. And very low, Marcus Deal, the real deal, didn't have much of a chance. He's NFL bound. Marcus got the first round selection. Braylon James got a fifth round flyer. Okay. Congrats to Ben 
Taylor and Lance Hurd getting selected at the offensive line. I'm literally gushing again over this transfer portal. That's the second straight year that it's going crazy. Like no joke, we got Ricky Collins from LSU and Eli Holstein. What? No way. The quarterback from Pitt has won multiple Heismans in so many dynasty simps. Tredez Green, six foot seven. Let's go, man. Eli Holstein pulled the trigger. Hausa Utu, Tredez Green. Some great signees here. Eli chose it over Bama. And dude, I'm not gonna lie, he might get the start over DJ Lagway. They're both gonna be seniors, but I didn't realize Eli had wheels like that 90 speed and like 96 throw power. All right, I talked a big talk. Training results didn't let me down. 92 overall, 90 offense, 94 defense. Top two players on this roster, they're quarterbacks. Eli Holstein gets the slight edge and he's got some numbers. A little underwhelming at Pittsburgh, which is probably why he hit the portal. I'm used to seeing some huge gouty numbers. Compared to Lagway, actually he looks really good. Lagway that is, he has the upper hand. This whole quarterback room just looks good. Might be controversial, but I think I'm gonna redshirt Lagway in case this goes to year five. But it might not have to get there with our best group yet. David Tarpley, elite receiver, 99 speed. And a host of other guys skilling up. Tight end Lafayette looks really good, but I'm also really excited about Tredez Green. Six foot seven star from LSU. Feels weird to do it, but like I said, Lagway gets the red shirt. Just as insurance as we go into the next season. At the time of the first bracket, I can confirm Eli Holstein is a great fit for this team. Racking up so many big wins, I just gotta ask what happened here at Duke? Grayson Loftus went to work, Eli Holstein not so much. That is surprising given the fact that Holstein is having such a rejuvenated season. He just needed a change of scenery. Last perfect team remaining here in the Big 12. We can never get too cozy with Iowa State Texas Tech knocking. Those hurdles proved not to be a problem. Holstein, the right man for the job, whooping up on everyone. Utah kept it close, but no cigar. So we got a date in the Big 12 championship against in-state rivals. I'm going to let the Sim take control of the team that we built to see if they stand the test of time. And also because I believe I'm going to see a whole lot of Eli Holstein when I jump into this national playoff run. Sim already came out slinging a touchdown to kick off the game. 7-3 going into half. 10-3. It's a 10-10 ball game. It's all tied up. Gonna slow it down one play at a time. Texas Tech with a great drive here. Do they hit the field goal? They do. Quickly down the field. Holstein driving them. Chewing clock. First and goal at the one. Second and goal. Touchdown. A well-fought battle all the way through. Really tough. The Red Raiders, even though they lost the receiver that we stole, they look good. And now it actually comes down to this. They have a shot here, practically in the red zone, and they're going to squander it. Why would you dump it to your running back? Take a shot to the end zone. Instead, they're going to lose. And there's O'Malley and a lot of the defense that we addressed her community input. I know you didn't hear the audio, but everyone was talking about improving the defense, and we did that with our first recruiting class. They're up to a 94 overall. The team is inspired, ready to play hard, and we're going to play often. It's the playoffs. It's Big 12 championship football and a berth into a bowl game. Slightly surprised not to see Holstein's name on the Heisman list because the way he played for TCU was electric. 42 touchdowns to four ends. Tack on another 700 yards and seven rushing touchdowns. Over 4,000 yards and just about 50 touchdowns that screams Heisman to me Dozy sure knows what I'm talking about and seriously now no awards or accolades for Ramon Gay but he has a nose for the ball seven interceptions I need to see these superstars in action in the Sugar Bowl against Michigan there's the bracket there's our path notably UAB knocking off Oregon in the first round okay little blazer action but here we go we were built for this Eli Holstein in his final season TCU four years since we took over the job about six seven years removed from that national championship run part of that run back in the day we had to get through michigan and so it's a little rematch and here we go i've talked a lot about him it's eli holstein time staying up fighting through three guys i think he was robbed of a heisman so let's go ahead and show everyone why all playoff long play action holstein over the middle good connection to one of his top targets all year long the key to me is to watch out for the offensive line will they hold up for us well Strike one, score one for the boys back home, Fort Worth, that's for you. If it's gonna be like anything from the previous matchup when we faced off against Michigan, pedal to the metal, it's gonna be fireworks. 
Hudson, our big addition. He loves being a horn frog. Everyone saw what TC was building and that just led to a couple massive waves of transfers that's taken it to a whole nother level. Dude, 82, this guy's been so good. Honestly, I just had a feeling this was the right group for the job. I mean, check it out. That is the red shirt freshman McGinnis setting Guinness world records. Youngest cornerback to intercept in a playoff game. I'm just kidding. I just made that one up, but you get the point. Guinness world records, Guinness interceptions. Gonna pretty much end in ice out this game. Holstein's got some legs too. I can't keep forgetting. I always have an impression that he's just some field general that can't move it. I need me a national championship for them froggies. What is the symbol? What is the symbol? It's like this, right? Frogs. Saw a lot of that at the game. Check the first game off of our list. 28 to three was not sweating. Eli just had himself a can of corn. Heisman winner meets snub. Heisman winner in this next matchup, Orange Bowl. Back to our Purple Pride unis in this one. Just like the good luck I think we will have in this one as well. Scanning. Wow. Wow. Dancing around, making magic happen. I think whoever wins this game deserves the Heisman most. So I'm going to make a case for our guy. Little underground bet here. Christopher, the quarterback on the other side, is betting the trophy on the line. He'll give it to him. Okay. Maybe I was just yapping before seeing the stats. I didn't realize he had a thousand more yards. I'll redact what I said, but I won't redact the bet that is still on the table. He will give up his Heisman trophy to Eli if he loses the game. He's really just made my life super easy this entire time. A perfect record in conference play and just moving it through the playoffs. Can't give him all the credit. As you can tell, defense held down Michigan and we're holding back Clemson. I'm gonna look onto the outside here, just send everyone on a streak. I want Tarpley and this is why. Can you understand folks? 99 speed to the house. I don't care who you are in defense. You don't mess with the frogs. You get the spikes, man. Clemson scratching and clawing their way back into this game. Eli, nifty left, right, left. Oh, give me six, big man. That literally is gonna seal it here. Fourth and five on defense. Beautiful. I can't believe it. We are off to the races. National championship game, here we come. The team is built in every which way. It's the final countdown, number two TCU against number nine Georgia. They found a way to squeak their way through the bracket. Led by first team All-American Dozy and second team All-American Eli Holstein, even freshman All-American getting in on the act. We're in good hands going into the national championship game. The precipice of everything we have been working so hard for. It's the Georgia Bulldogs versus the Texas Christian Horned Froggies. Just like Eli's done all playoffs, I'm expecting to start off with a bang. Lobbing one up into interception territory. That was actually really, really, really silly of Eli. Now we're locked into a barn burner here against a tough Georgia Bulldog team. Uzuma. I told you my future user a couple of years back. Well, here he is. That was actually crazy because look at the change of field right before halftime. Insane. Eli, scramble my boy. Throw some guys down. Oh my goodness. Go, go. Do your dance. Do your dance. Do your freaking dance. I can't believe what I just saw. That has got to be one of the most impressive touchdowns I've ever scored with a quarterback scramble throwing dudes around. Third and 11. Oh, Uzuma. National championship heroes are born talk about a linebacker refusing to go down after all the heroics it's 21 21 frogs dogs give me a block dude my biggest question there is how in the world do i not get a block fourth and six thank you only 76 passing yards against this defense eli found micah hudson there at the right time i could start being strategic chewing clock but i don't think that's in our best interest because to be honest we need a lot of first downs and now we're down third and 14 i think it's in our best interest to just take three, probably. I really got to focus in. Focus, focus, focus. That was pretty terrible, unfortunately. Third and six. I can't believe how crucial this is right here. We need the stop of a lifetime. He caught it. Oh my goodness. Third and eight. I actually just need to stop it. It's a run play. Uzama was there. We called the timeout. This is it. I cannot make it up. This has to be your best stuff right here. Go down the sideline, get out of bounds. Feel a little risky calling like a four vertical here. Let's just step up with Eli. I know he's got some in the tank. Oh no, he did not get the first down. So that means we got to hustle, hustle, hustle. I was really hoping he would get that. 
At least that's the first down. 20 seconds to go on the outside. It looks like he might have a step. This DB is known for his heroics. Not in this case. Oh my goodness. Top Lee. I have not called on you much this season, but 99 speed came in when we needed it most. That could be a national championship ceiling grab. I cannot make this up. Eli, with little time left, just dropped in a deuce right to that bucket, baby. Let's go. Literally on top of the world after that. This has been one of the most entertaining national championship games I've played in myself. Eli Holstein just wanted it more. I'm not gonna lie. He knew what was at stake and he came out and got it done. One second left. This is it. Protection at all costs. We have to hold this down. Do not let any funny business, please. Adams with the pick. That is going to do it. Celebration. Come on. Da -da -da -da. And to all my TCU fans and friends out there, everyone I interacted with the community that made this rebuild possible. They gave me the inputs, the challenges, made it happen. Like I said, apologies, you didn't get the audio, but you still got the pretty sweet rebuild here. We got it done in four years. Impressive stuff. Horn Frogs, making up for what could have been a handful of years back, we took it out on a team that skunked us in real life. So many players could have been an MVP today, from Eli to Dozy to that last catch by our speedster, man. Micah Hudson added some big grabs on fourth down. Everyone came together for a heck of a team performance. And with that, it's been your boy, King Sponge. If you're soaking up these rebuilds, College Football 25 style, make sure to subscribe and join the Sponge Army as we bring so many more soak em up type bangers for your pleasure.